Okay, it's time to test the RTX 3090 Ti Kimping graphics card on LN2. The GPU is mounted on the Kimping Cooling Tech9 Icon Extreme GPU container, which is the latest GPU container from KimpingCooling.com. The card is placed on the EVGA Z690 Kimpy motherboard, of course, which features PCI Express Gen 4, 12900K CPU, and two sticks of G Skill Trident Z5 6400 CAS32 memory. I think the CPU will be run at like 5.4 to 5.5 GHz, 4.5 on the cache, 4.1 to 4.2 on the uh, Atom cores, and memory at 6800, I think. Superflower Leadex 8 pack 2000 watt platinum power supply to power the whole system. The stock heatsink on the right side via RAM, and I just have this. Uh, very basic delta fan blowing towards the left side via RAM, which doesn't have any heatsink at all. So uh, that's pretty much the whole setup. And of course, a second power supply to power on the Kimping Cooling GPU Inferno, which will keep the memory chips at warmer temperatures compared to the uh, GPU itself. But yeah, without further ado, we can get started, I think. The main focus will be on 3 Mark Pro Royal and maybe GPU Pi. Well, first of all, will be very interesting to see if we can run even close to full pot temperatures at all because it's still pretty difficult at, at least for me i mean but yeah i'll get pouring and uh, let's hope for the best let's see what happens Okay, so I decided to stop because I faced a thermal paste crack once again. This time around, the thermal paste cracked under load, so during 3D Mark Pro Royal, which is quite rare, because usually thermal paste cracks at idle. The usual case is that you exit the benchmark after it finishes, and boom, you get an instant thermal paste crack afterwards. But this time around, I could hear the thermal paste cracking at minus 182 or minus 183 degrees Celsius. It was clearly audible. And it's quite rare if you see that happen under load. 
So uh, pretty sad thing at the end of this uh, whole uh, LN2 session, which has been lasting quite a long time, if you ask me. But yeah, so at least I got something. When I tested the Kimpin Cooling Tech9 Icon Extreme beta version for the first time on the RTX 3090 Ti, I actually had a pretty constant, like pretty solid full pot action at the end of that attempt. I didn't go for full pot temperatures straight away. I started at like minus 150 to minus 160 degrees Celsius at 2000 megahertz on the GPU. And I pushed my way up from there quite slowly, but I had pretty awesome full pot action during that session. The main reason why I managed to do the uh, uh, full pot quite well this time around was that I used a lot of heat directly behind the GPU. So uh, the heat definitely helps. It helps the uh, card itself, so the PCB and the backplate to stay uh, at positive temperatures. And I think it reduces the amount of PCB bending that can occur when you run the GPU at very cold temperatures. One thing that you definitely need the heat for is to maintain warm enough temperatures on the memory chips. So if you don't have the memory chips at reasonable temperatures, your performance will be awful. And that's the main reason why RTX 3090 Ti GPU model has been behind the normal 3090 in many of these 3D tests, especially 3D Mapo Royal. That was the main reason why my performance actually sucked. So I managed to pass 3D Mapo Royal at 2895, so around 2.9 gigahertz on the core. But the memory chips were at like zero degrees or like uh, minus 10, something like that. And the performance was very bad. So the score was only like a bit under 19,300. If I had the very same heat gun setup as right now, my performance would have been close to 20,000 points in 3D Mapo Royal. So uh, I think it's a combination of many things. The main reason why I had uh, like successful full production with all of those things combined was that my uh, thermal paste spread after taking the card apart from the GPU container was pretty awesome. The thermal paste spread was nearly excellent. So uh, usually when the uh, paste has cracked during this session, the thermal paste spread looks pretty bad after I take the card apart. So uh, you, need, you need to do the lapping on the GPU of course, so that so the surface has to be very even and so on. The GPU pot itself has to be good as well. Some pots might have uneven surface. You need to use a back plate that prevents the PCB from bending as much as possible. Sometimes a very thick thermal pad can be good. On that attempt, when I, when I had the most successful full pot action, I actually used the newest thermal pad from Elmer Labs, which comes with the newest uh, GPU, heating plate, whatever. I think the thickness of that pad is like one centimeter. So it's a very thick pad. But uh, yeah, at the end now, I had the same end result, even with three millimeter thermal pad and one centimeter thick thermal pad. So uh, the mount itself has to be perfect. And of course, thermal paste varies as well. The uh, pink thermal paste from Thermal Grizzly has been the most solid both performance-wise and thermal paste cracking-wise this far when it comes to pushing these cards to full pot temperatures. So uh, yeah, I used these very last attempts to uh, get some decent score on the 3D Mapo Royal, but no luck this time around. Even the uh, good guys like Bizo Bizo, even Clemens or Sense, and even the uh, guys who run these tests for Galaxy usually like OGS and Ralph, even they do crack from time to time, or sometimes quite often. Bizo Bizo thinks that the uh, GPUs vary. Some cards might crack much easier than others. Could be, but it's pretty hard if you ask me, like putting all these things together. But you need to use a lot of heat on the 3090 Ti, a lot more than on the RTX 3090. I purchased this Makita heat gun just for this attempt. And with this model, you can actually vary the uh, temperature quite well. And when you put the heat gun on the second position, the uh, fan speed isn't too like fast compared to some hair dryers, for example. So you don't want the fan speed to be too uh, fast, if you ask me. So I think this heat gun is pretty perfect for the task. But yeah, so uh, I don't have much LN2 left, so I might need to uh, visit this thing later. I need to check the uh, 
GPU surface a tiny bit more. But uh, yeah, that's that's it pretty much. So uh, world record score in GPU Pi 32 billion. I actually didn't try 1 billion in the older version of GPU Pi, as that doesn't reward points anymore on hardwarebot.org. The frequency for that would have gone well over 3 gigahertz. So uh, the only reason why I would have wanted to test that is that I would like to see over 3 gigahertz broken on the 3090 Ti. It should be quite easy if you ask me. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So at least we got some experience and testing going on with the RTX 3090 Ti. The TI is definitely better than the normal 3090 if you can maintain the efficiency you have at air cooling and on water cooling. With the very high GPU clock speeds, the end performance should be through the roof, if you ask me. So if we had the same efficiency as on water at 2.9 GHz, the 3 uh, mark Royal score should be well over 20,000, like 20,300, maybe 400, somewhere around that mark. But yeah, if you like to see this uh, world record broken, if you like to see my testing and hear about my experiences and my tips for full pot temperatures, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.